Hey everybody, Jake here with Transpire to go over the second video this weekend. Going to go over a couple crypto charts. I'm not a big crypto trader myself, but I know a lot of, of our followers and our customers are. So wanted to make sure that everybody knows that you know you can use a lot of these different features on whatever market you're trading. It's not just you know raindrops work on stocks. You know, anchored VWAP just works on this and that. Um, all of these things work together. So the first thing I want to go over is Bitcoin. And uh, first thing I want to do is anchor the Alpha Trends anchored view app from this point in time. And what's really interesting about this, I'm going to go into laggards versus leaders uh, a little bit here as well. Something that we went over in last uh, weekend's event with uh, Nebraska Gooner and Austin Silver. Um, I did want to mention one when we broke out last week, and this was actually on Sunday right before the show started, you could see that there's a ton of volume supporting the price above this resistance line. And so this is what is called a raindrop chart. It's a volume-based chart. So rather than having an open and a close, you've got a volume-weighted average price for the left-hand side, which is the first half of the day. You can see here the left-hand side represents the first half of the period on the left, and then the right is the second half of the period. And so um, these bars here are the volume weighted average price for the first half. The bar on the right is the volume weighted average price for the second half. So if you're traditionally trading just bar charts, this would be your open, this would be your close, but instead this is green because your volume weighted average price is higher during the second half of the period than it is during the first half, showing that buyers were in control. So the second layer to this is the ability to see the volume profile on the candle. So you can see throughout this period of time, whether this is one day, you can see on the left hand side, most of the volume was focused at the bottom of the range. And then into the second half of the day, you can see all this volume started to come in and it started to create higher prices. And we know it created higher prices because there is no volume on the left. So we know this volume profile is from the right-hand side, which drove the price up to new highs. So the different colors are your green is when your VWAP for the second half of the period is higher than the first. Your VWAP for the first half and the second half equal each other when you have a neutral raindrop, which uh, we're still trying to figure out if that's blue or purple. But your bearish raindrop is the opposite of the bullish. When you've got your volume weight average price for the second half of the period, it's lower than the first half, showing that sellers are in control and volume, uh, the average volume by price is lower into the second half of the day or second half of the 30 minute candle, whatever you're looking at. So now when we look at this uh, chart, we can understand that when we did break out here, there was a lot of that volume above the resistance line. And so we knew that buyers were definitely in control when we were breaking new highs on Bitcoin. And so what happens, we've got some consolidation, this previous area of resistance becomes support, and then you've got your next breakout. And you, we've pretty much got this kind of, ascending, uh, kind of ascending triangle breakout here. Notice once again, a lot of the volume was at the top of the range here, very similar to the candle that we just went over. We can see that during the second half of the day, a lot of the buyers came in pushing price up to new highs with this volume. And you can see we've almost got a very similar chart here. You can see the price is slowly starting to try to creep up again. But you know, when we go into a longer term candle like the weekly and we anchor the volume by price or the volume profile since June 23rd uh, that week, which was the high that we saw, you can see that a majority of the supply is holding right around this 10,000 area. So notice what happened. We formed a base here. Price bounced off of this base, which was our demand zone. We were able to move very quickly through this zone because there wasn't a lot of shares holding. And then we finally uh, kind of pulled back a little bit once we started to hit this supply zone above. So, you know, will price continue up and really hit this supply zone just like we did previously? And remember, this supply zone was here before. So this was a classic zone to watch when we when we pulled back at 10K last time. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But from a leader and lagger perspective, notice that Bitcoin broke out uh, initially through this anchored volume weight average price from February 12th. And we anchored it from here because that was just the reversal of the trend. So we initially broke through 
you know, actually broke through and closed above this zone on March, uh, that was April 1st. Now, if we go to Litecoin and we anchored the volume by price from the same point in time, you'll notice something very strange here on Litecoin. You'll notice that Litecoin is literally just breaking out of this anchored VWAP. And so if we compare this to Bitcoin, Bitcoin's like up here right now. I mean, like this is kind of, if you want to, relatively speaking, compare the two, you know, Bitcoin's pretty much at this point, considering that it broke through this line on April 1st, whereas Litecoin is just breaking through it. So is Litecoin a laggard? Who knows? We'll have to see. But one thing that I want to point out here is uh, something that I haven't talked about on the other charts yet, uh, even on the uh, stock charts that we went over today, is the MACD. So if I can find the MACD on here, I got to add a new one. And in order to add an indicator, just type in MACD, pops up, apply. So now we can see here something very interesting, right? If we go and backtest the MACD cross, let me just get rid of all these things. Um, you'll see something interesting, right? If we want to test what the weekly MACD cross has done over the lifetime of Litecoin, we can go and do that very easily by going to the market scanner. Uh, nope, strategy tester, just kidding. Uh, and what we can do here is we can go to the weekly and we want to uh, test the condition indicator. And we want to do the MACD fast crossed up through the MACD slow. And we want to know what the return was after five candles. Or in this case, since we're doing the weekly candle, what's the return after five weeks once this is crossed? If we go and test this out, you'll see the mean trade return is 38, uh, excuse me, 39%. So remember, we were testing this as a long position. You can test it as a short position as well if you had, did have a short strategy. But if we see this on the chart, notice every single time we've had a cross, you know, here was our first cross here, 168% in five weeks. Here's our next cross, we had a negative 18% return. Here's our next cross here, which occurred right here, you can see on the chart, 4.15%. Here, you've got a MACD cross, and then you've got a 2.76% return. So you can see over time, you know, this one particular entry really is skewing the data. But, you know, generally we've had three winners versus one loser here. And you can see that here um, in the tabular data, three winners, one loser. And so, um, you know, if the MACD did decide to cross again, notice that we're very close here. That is information that we'll want to know going into the weeks ahead. And so that's something that you can do on the platform. You can strategy test any um, strategy that you have, whether that's a function of a MACD cross or the price breaking through a moving average, whatever the case is, you can test that. So I did want to just mention here that one, this is kind of lagging versus the, uh, versus, uh, the Bitcoin chart. And if we go to, let's say, Ethereum or um, Light, uh, Link, Let's go to ETH USD on Coinbase. You'll see that on Coin, uh, excuse me, on Ethereum. If we anchor that view app from this high, we broke out really closed and broke out through it in uh, mid mid April. Uh, so it seems like Bitcoin was really leading the pack here. Obviously, we did hit this point and technically closed above it on April seventh. But notice that this was a laggard. You know, on April first. We were way down here on Ethereum. And so notice how quickly Ethereum got back to this point and it was clearly lagging Bitcoin. And so, you know, comparing this to Litecoin, we're pretty much right here on Litecoin right now. Like we're just breaking out. So is Litecoin a laggard to Bitcoin and now Ethereum? We'll just have to see. One thing that I wanted to show here on the weekly chart is simply the fact that if we did anchor the volume profile from these January highs, you'll see that a ton of volume is pretty much holding right where we're trading at. So you can see if we if we start that point from this January 18 high, all of the volume is holding in this area. So is this going to create a base for the next move up? Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. But it is interesting to see how much um, you know accumulation is going on at this particular point in time since those 2018 highs. 
The last one I want to go over is Link. Uh, this is one that uh, some of my friends like to uh, look at. It seems like this is uh, one that's got quite the following. Um, this is one that I really want to show you guys is almost kind of like uh, the, the initial, uh, you know, leader with Bitcoin. Because notice here we broke through on April 5th and we didn't even look back from this anchored VWAP from this, uh, this high. One thing as well, notice that Link hit a high on March 4th where all the others hit their highs in February. So um, Link has been somewhat of a leader here. And you'll see, um, you know, if we go to, let's say, the hourly chart, you'll see something pretty interesting. You'll see that we are trying to break out of this symmetrical triangle. Um, you know, there was a little bit of a flush here. Uh, if we turn the volume by price off, actually, let's just see the volume by price since we started this symmetrical triangle, which is right here. We can see that a majority of the shares were holding in this zone, which created the base for the next leg up. So, uh, you know, there, most of those shares are still holding in 380 zone. So if the price moves up quickly, you don't have a lot of shares holding above. And, you know, this would be new all time highs on link. So if we look at this, you know, this would be um, something that's technically leading the market as far as breaking new all-time highs if this did break, you know, around five bucks. So uh, look at Link as maybe one of those ones to watch as a leader of the market now. Uh, it is one that isn't as well known as some of the other ones, but it is interesting to see, especially on this hourly chart, the price trying to break through the symmetrical triangle. Uh, by the time we release this video and it gets all rendered and the, the quality is good, you know, this will be really cool to see where Link is now. Right now, it is uh, about 2 o'clock uh, Denver time, so that's 4 o'clock Eastern. We're hoping to release this video around 8 o'clock Eastern for the high-quality version to be available. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens here, but make sure to look at this uh, chart when this releases to see where the chart's gone since. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching the crypto version of this weekend's analysis. Hopefully this helps, and uh, we'll definitely see you guys uh, soon for another video coming up.